got your deposit We've been in love for years You gave me comfort through the pain Bottled all my tears Say we nothing I can do without you I have faith but the situations rise And I tend to doubt you Lord, keep me from wavering, giving in So many times I've committed willful sins And I'm feeling them It's like I can't move forward The lust of my eyes make me feel so forward How could you ever let you do like me? I'm insecure and I'm nothing that I'm meant to be I was impure but you still shed your blood for me You made me clean and you took away my sins from me Now I can see that there ain't nothing I can do Nothing in this world can take my hope in you, yeah my heart's so graceful, you've been so faithful Through my ups and my downs, smiles and the frowns yeah. uh, You're still around, through my fears and the tears You still draw me near, yeah. even when I doubt uh, And even when I'm unfaithful, you remain faithful You can't deny yourself, yeah. and even when I'm unfaithful You remain faithful, you can't deny yourself they don't know how I feel I'm looking to the cross It's the only thing that's real The only thing yeah. Forgetting what's behind Keep on my mind I ain't gotta chase a sign nah. yeah. See I've been by with a price yeah. He died for my sins So that he can give me life Hey, yeah. You know we coming back soon He's looking for your faith He ain't checking what you do No Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X. You're listening to Jerry Wissler Worldwide Podcast. What's going on, family? What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Positive Power 21.4 Christian Media. And you're listening to Late Night with Jerry was Live with my co host Kimmy Kim from Relation Radio and Magazine. And this show is brought to you by PTI Bible College at www.pastorstime.com and my journey with Paula G. That's right at Paula G. The Voice. Dot com on Atlanta's WATC 2 and 57.2 every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Get the app. And it's brought to you by Positive Power, Double XI Christian Films, Who I Am, coming soon to MBTV 21. That's right, Who I Am. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Jay Woods Live Worldwide, and we all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. The Bible is the living word of God. It feeds us through the promise of God found in Scripture. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Woo! Philippians 4, 4, 7 reads, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice and let everyone see that you are selfish and considered in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. You do this, you experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right, my guest tonight is Sharon Ann. She got a brand new song out called Rise, featuring Bizzle. And also, we're going to talk to Henry Harris. He got a big event going on in the DMV. He's here to tell us all about it. They brought to you by Round the Clock Management with Colton McConnell. Hey, man, can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? All right, shout out to Paula G. Shout out to Paula, Paula, Paula G for my journey. And Dr. Paul Kelly, First Lady Marcia Kelly. 
Ray Summer from Gospel Music Magazine, Sky from MVP, and Gumdrop. That's right, that's me. <laughs> and GMAP1.com. Shout out to Pastor Kevin Strata. And shout out to DC TV 21 to Cab, Georgia to Beaver. And WEPH Mississippi, Tracy. What a shout out to you guys and the whole Positive Power family. That's right. Shout out to the Christian party line with the ladies of radio. All right. Everything good, everybody? All right. Let's do this show. All right. Let's talk to you, Kimmy Kim. Kimmy Kim is here, y'all. Let's welcome on. All right. What's going on, Kimmy Kim? What's up? What's up? How you What's doing? What's going on, Jerry Royce? How you doing? I'm doing good. Batman's hanging in there. Busy weekend. Busy weekend. I know you had a busy weekend too. And um we glad yeah, to Yeah, birthday you. and birthdays and yeah. yeah that's that right. girl came, kept me busy. Libras, that's <laughs> right. That's right. I celebrated my mom's birthday. Tuesday, I think I mentioned that on the show last week. We, we went down to see her last weekend, and my brother had her this weekend. So I got to call oh, and wow. see what kind of t- – did she have a good time? Yeah, it was on Eastern Shore. That sounds was, like a plan. Yeah, it was in Chestertown. That's, that's uh, where the big Washington College is. I think that's a private college, I okay. believe. Yeah, that's they pretty much – they run that city, <laughs> that little town. That's so right. So how you doing today? Batman is good. Overall, yeah, good? um, I was up a little late rooting for my team. Looked like the Ravens pulled a big victory over the Steelers, which is always a, a brawl. But uh, we we kind of manhandled okay. them this time. Yeah, how your team? How your team doing? Yeah. How your team? Kansas City looking pretty good, actually. I don't- they're on Monday Night Football. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I better catch some of that. And also, um, yeah. the Rams doing pretty good. I know you abandoned them, but they doing pretty good now. Yeah. Well, my dad still loves the Rams, so. Yeah. Uh, good for him. Good for him. Yeah, they doing pretty well this year. They got a good running attack, passing attack, good quarterback. So they, they rebuilt. And um, everything's clicking. You know, still early in the season. That's a good thing. Yeah, quarter way through the season. So that's good. That's good. All right, we got two guests tonight. Still early. Yeah, still early. Okay, I can't wait to meet her. Yeah, Sharon Ann. She got a new song I call Rise featuring Bizzle. Beautiful song. And then we're going to talk to uh, Mr. Uh, Henry Harris. So I think she comes on between, uh, I guess, I guess she'll be dialing real soon between nine fifty nine thirty 30 because I think she's still in studio. Okay. So we, we only got her until 10 o'clock. Then we're going to talk to Mr. Harris. So that's cool. Find out what she got going on. So I'm going to have to get her bio over to you real quick. All okay. right. We got awesome. some, we got some new music by Profect. Profecto. That's right. Miguel Esposado. Okay. He sent me some new music. He sent me a, he said it was an EP, but it looked more like a, <laughs> an album. Thought it was the album he sent me. Really? Yeah, yeah. He sent me a whole lot of stuff. So we're gonna check it out. All right. So this one right here, we okay, heard one. Good. Yeah, we opened up with one, and I think that one was called um, "Hand in Hand." So this one right here, we're gonna listen to is called uh, "Die Daily," and this is by Profect. Oh, he's from Seattle, Washington. Here we go. <laughs> If you try to tussle I was raised on the weight, pal You don't scare me with that muscle <laughs> Dumbo, you can't move me with that hoorah Hoorah. We know to cast out demonios and brujas That's demons and witches The flow is switches It's sicker than the pit Sniffing dicks Throwing up in your kitchen I know they listen Spiritual lyricism Man, I'ma get them Do away with the schisms and ism Now I'ma hit them hit Who said them Christians Is some scary dudes Say, well, You must have never met my crew I think that you confused yeah. uh, We ain't these rap cats Neither dog. Nah, dog We anoint and lay hands on each other dogs right, Then dog. came a long way from bunk beds to breaking bread yeah. Ain't no way you'll murder me I'm already dead I ain't scared to die before I die daily I ain't scared to die before I die daily I ain't scared to die before I die daily Miss me with the threats before I die daily I ain't scared to die before I die daily 
Resurrected with that new life, heaven bent. Put my faith in Christ, now I'm serving life sentences. Yeah. This ain't just rap on my genre. No, I'll kill you high when you're smoking on that ganja. Ooh. I rep that Red Cross, you need a paramedic. Come here. You rep that Green Cross, huh. the devil's epidemic. I think it's so pathetic, just remember that I said it. When it comes to truth, I'ma post it like I'm academics. Uh. Yeah, I'll take these shots like Chinton with a broken heart. Sitting at the bar playing that guitar. Uh-huh. Uh. So take aim if you're feeling jumpy. Come on. I'm like hammer in the sky. Spirit, none of you can touch me. Yeah, I'm going bolder, no stage fright. No, they tell me, bro, you want the craze, should have stayed like that. Well, but he don't got my testimony, so the lane's different. Just know I'm chilling with the Lord if I wind up missing. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. Miss me with the threats, boy, I die daily. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. To be absent from the body, body, body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord. To be absent from the body, body, body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord. I wanna finish my course, my course, my course. before we come and take us home. Take us home. Take us home. I wanna finish my course, my course, my course. but until then, I gotta let him go. Boy, you ain't scaring nobody with the empty threats. Me, you just barking loud, talking like you got your rest. We came to pray, but you acting like you wanna play. Me, scared of the devil, that'll be the day. So let it spray, I'ma get about that grave. And look you in the face and still tell you Jesus Christ saves. Cock it back again, put the barrel to my head. This new man's forever, my old man is dead. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. I ain't scared to die, boy, I die daily. All right, that was Profecto, and that one was called Da Daily. He has a whole EP out, and um, hopefully we'll have him, have him on the show so we can do a, a listening party. How does sound to you, Kimmy Kim? Give him a, a listening party. I like that. Yeah. I like bring, that song. Yeah, he bring, I Die Daily. That's yeah, dope. He brings songs out quick, too. I think, <laughs> I think I got about 20 songs from a Profecto. He don't play. He must have a studio. His own studio because he kicks him at up his house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he just bought himself a I new like home, that. so now he got plenty of room to to uh, do some stuff. Make make God happy. All right. Well, we got our Amen. guests um, on the line. I'm gonna I'm gonna peep a bo- I, I peeped her bio, and the biggest thing that came out is that uh, she's a PK kid. Yeah, she's been serving over 20 years in her parents' church. Yeah, and but she started her own ministry. So we're gonna to talk to her about that. Amen. Yeah, cause she she's worked with some okay. greats. Yeah, she performed with some of the the uh, gospel's biggest artists: Todd Triplett, Fred Hammond, Kim Burrell, Donny McClurkin, just to name a few. So we're gonna to talk to her and find okay. out what that what that life has been like for her. And then we're gonna play her song. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and open up with her song, and then we can talk to her. You want to do that? We do that. How does that? I really do. I am in. I love. Right. I love fellowshipping. Let's do it. That's right. There you are. All right. Well, here we go. We're going to listen to Rise by Sharon Ann. Watch the news lately. Now I can see the hearts breaking. The world's gone crazy. Enough is enough Mothers and fathers Losing sons and daughters Senseless tragedies But I believe We will rise, we will rise up Take a stand, never give up We'll never break, never lose hope See, I believe Better days ahead of us so wipe the tears, put your head up Cause at the end of the tunnel yeah. Peeking through the darkness I can 
All right, that is awesome. Love this song. All right, don't forget, everybody, we got Music Vision Unlimited going on. If you're looking for an opportunity to perform live on cinema concert and you want to have that thing streaming online on pay-per-view platform, you're trying to monetize your ministry, give us a shout-out. We show you how to do it. That's right. We got different packages um, that I think you would be very impressed with. So uh, give us a call and find out how you can have your that's right, your EP or LP done as a visual album in cinema on film. All right. All right, looking forward to working with you. Kimmy Kim, that was Rise. How you like that? I love that song. You still there, Kimmy Kim? I am here. All right, if you know how you do that in between mutes and stuff. Yeah, I thought work. I was on mute. They don't work. Yeah, you made me think I was on mute because <laughs> <laughs> I forget to turn my mic back oh, on. Oh, <laughs> no. I was trying to unmute myself, and, you know, sometimes this phone works. I need another new phone. But don't worry about it because I, I meet you on my end. <laughs> you know, I meet everybody. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about it. I got you on this end. Don't you worry about it. All right. Well, we're excited to have Miss Sharon Ann. You can, if you want to promote her and have her come to your town or. You know, perform with you, invite her out, contact round the clock management with Colton McConnell. That's right. He's the man. We call him the arm man. He's, he starts his day at three o'clock. So that's, that's who you want working for you. Somebody who gets up before you get up. So he gets up before me. So he doing good. Half the time I'm still up when he gets up. So he, he can't be working harder than the Batman. Is that right? Is that right? Miss Sharon? And is he working that hard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's working hard. I appreciate him. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 
Yo, uh, hard work, Mr. McCoy. He sure is. And welcome, welcome to Late Night with Jerry West Live on Positive Power. Double XI. My co host is Kimmy Kim from Relation Radio. Say hi, Kimmy. So, Kimmy, you back on mute again. Well, I guess you. Hello, heard. how are you? My phone in and out. How are you doing? I love that song that I just heard. Thank welcome. you so much. It's an honor to have you on. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. You're welcome. You. Now, Sharon, you, you've been you've been working with the with the great. So, you know, I wasn't going to read your bio. We're going to let you tell your story. So, the platform is yours. So, tell us who is Sharon Ann? Who is this this PK kid? Is that how we say it? PK? Uh, PK? 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 Yeah, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, all started when I was just young. Um, again, um. Uh, started singing as about like four years old and then parents start the ministry and uh, bro- brothers and I, we uh, started as young musicians uh, there when they started off uh, um, about the age of 13. Mm. I uh, Actually, they started the ministry at, age, at the age of eight years old. And so I started uh, playing at that time the keyboard. And at the age of 13, I wrote my first uh, song. And um, uh, actually, uh, I think by the time I was 15, 16, um, my parents was pushing me to actually lead worship at church. I was very, very comfortable with doing backgrounds, which I still am. Mm. Um, and uh, But they really pushed me because they saw more in me than just, you know, just staying in the background. And so my mom would travel across uh the country and uh, preach, and I would uh, accompany her, uh, playing behind her, singing before she gets up, and um, so forth and so on. It was basically training me, training me at, at that time. And, uh, you know, uh, as time progressed, as I got older, um, I was afforded so many great opportunities. Parents uh, uh, would bring so many different names to the ministry for conferences, and I would be able to you know, accompany, accompany them as well, whether I was playing behind them or, or singing back up for them. And at, by the time, uh, 2015, uh, the beginning of the year, by the time the beginning of the year came, I, uh, started a singing background, uh, with Ty Tribbett and, uh, originally born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then now moved to Dallas, Texas, um, where I was able to go on the festival of praise tour, uh, that, um, was, spearheaded by Fred Hammond, and uh, he had so many people with him that I was able to work with, uh, Israel Halton, Hezekiah Walker, and Kim Burrell, and so many others, um, Donnie, as you mentioned, and mm-hmm. so God has been really, really good, yeah. um, just um, wow. basically Amazing. being raised in the church by some wonderful parents, not perfect, I, and I'm speaking of myself, you know <laughs> what they say about PK, yeah. it is what it is, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it, it, it's all good. God has been so, so uh, awesome, and I wouldn't trade the experience of being a, a PK for the world. Uh, for the world, so God is good. All right, God is good. All right, Kim, you got a question for Miss Ann, Sharon Ann? Absolutely. My sister, you mentioned the PK. What yeah. are some of the um, assumptions that you experience as a PK? You know, I well, like they, to know those of, type of, of course, information. you know, they always say the PKs are the worst, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's because you're it put in the limelight. There's so many expectations exactly. that people have of you that they necessarily don't have of themselves. Um, I think that anybody who uh, is called themselves a Christian, we should all have that same level of expectation from one another, uh, not just because someone has a title. Whether you, if you're a Christian or a follower of Christ, there is an, a standard period. So, unfortunately, there is this pressure that's put on us only because we're quote unquote in the limelight. But um, I've learned over the years that you know what you can basically uh, you have leverage as that individual. I have the leverage. I can control you know how much I let it affect me. And at the end of the yeah. day, what I uh, found out was that you know what um, all have seen. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> 
for all. I don't. You preach it out. When, when the Bible says all, he means he means all. He means from the highest title to the lay member, all. And even our, our, our the righteousness that we do have is still a filthy, a filthy rat. The Bible says. So it doesn't matter uh, how hard we strive mm -hmm. to be quote unquote perfect. We'll never be perfect. Yeah. And I released myself from that because that's what I thought that I had to be. But once I came into the knowledge of, of really uh, digging into the Word for myself and and developing my relationship with Christ, I came to an understanding, like, you know what? Eh, most of the pressure that is on me is due to myself mm -hmm. because yeah. I'm allowing what people say, you know, to have this effect on me that it, that it really doesn't have to. I really don't have to allow it to be. Um, and so God pretty much freed me from that, from the opinions of people, from the pressure, you know, of feeling like I have to walk on eggshells. Yeah. Um, and developing my own relationship with God and understanding, you know, how, uh, what he called me to do and who he caused me, you know, really freed me. And so... You know, at the end of the day, I am, uh, I'm better now than I was back then um, as far as it pertains to that whole PK mm. assumption stuff, you know. So, yeah. Mm, I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I had neighbors that were PKs and it was three guys and a girl and the girl, the, the, the young lady, she handled it pretty well, but the guys were under pressure. But you when it came to sports, being stylish and being hip, mm -hmm. it, yeah, a lot of pressure yeah. from those guys, you know, and, and you the, know, a lot of yeah. times in that, even, you know, at the end of the day, even when it comes to, you know, the other things I do as far as modeling and, and acting and so forth and so on, um, you know, people uh, will say that, uh, some of the things that you do or that I do isn't quote unquote what a Christian mm -hmm. should be doing. But I believe that God has given me multiple gifts and uh, and he's using the gifts that I have to reach people outside of the four walls of what we say, the four walls of the church. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between church work and kingdom work. Kingdom work reaches outside of what we're used to, um, you know, in order to reach the laws. And I believe that God has given me these gifts to act. He'll say, I can still be a Christian and, and love God with all my heart and still be fly. You know what I'm saying? And still be on yeah. the big screen. You know what I'm saying? I am not limited. God didn't uh, be limited. We are not limited. I think that's, where people get it twisted. When you right. become a Christian, you don't lose, you gain. That's right. <laughs> so, I feel you amen. on that one. You gotta, you gotta flip the script. That's right. You gotta flip. Now, I'm reading your bio, and you mentioned, you know, acting and modeling and all that stuff. I was listening to Dave Chappelle when he was on um, Oprah's show. That was when he had just came back from disappearing. And one of the things he told her, he, he, he said he didn't have any friends, you know, do you do you feel like this sometimes that you know you don't really have that? I mean, do you have that one friend that can handle all of your success? Because you're very successful, very successful. Do you have that one person? Yeah. I mean, not a sibling. I mean, a, a friend outside the family. Amen. A friend. Personally, I uh, I do have you know a small circle of friends, and that's my preference. Um, because it's less maintenance <laughs> and mm. less problems. Um, so I keep just a small, a small group of people that I can confide in, that I can get counsel from outside of my family. I have a, uh, we're a very close knit family. Mm. Um, and so outside of them, I have a few that have been with me, that have prayed with me, that prayed for me, that can understand. Even when I'm like, oh, my God, I'm getting on your nerves. But <laughs> they're there consistently whenever I uh, need them. And so uh, I thank God for those individuals that he placed in my path that I'm able to trust and able to uh, confide in. And, and what I think is dope is the fact that they're not, yes, men, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me, 
when I'm wrong. And, you know, and they'll give me not advice and it doesn't have to be what I want to hear. And that's the kind of people that I surround myself by. Yeah. Uh, friends that will, you know, tell me the truth even when I don't want to hear it because it's best for me. Mm-hmm. You know? That's right. So, I, yeah. I call them cheerleaders. <laughs> when you got a group of cheerleaders, <laughs> you can't do no wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Kim, Kim, you still with us? I am. I'm just enjoying this wonderful sister, and mm-hmm. she is so right. You got to be careful with who you hang with because sometimes you got the Judas and the Peter in that one bunch. So I understand. Amen. I just love your music. Um, who writes most of your music? It sounds like you do. I actually do. I'm, I'm open <laughs> to uh, collaborating with other writers, but actually, uh, so far, I've written uh, every song that is out. I do have an EP that's out that I released in 2014 before I relocated. And Rise okay. is the most recent song that I released, um, mainly because, uh, I, love, you know, you see the state of the world, the way the uh, the state the world is in right now uh, yeah. as it pertains to uh, the division and 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 and, and the hate and and yeah. the lies and and so forth and Preaching so that. on and um what was you know the the enemy has a toxic um and whether you are, are Christian or not you see that the tactic is to divide and to cause people to be at odds and so forth and so on. There's power and unity, even in the Bible. You know, when you unify, uh, there was power in unity. And so I said, you know what? Uh, It's it's amazing that when you watch the news, you barely see anything that's positive. And the tactic of the enemy is to cause us to believe that there's nothing positive that's happening, that uh, that the world is just so... Now, mind you, there are evil people and evil things that are happening, but there is more positive things that are going on besides what's being shown. And our, um, if you're not careful, you'll let that sink in and you'll become depressed and so many other things. And I wanted to put out something that will give, you know, hope uh, to yeah. the world that would inspire, that will cause us to come together, a message that will say, hey, I know um, that you're hurting, or hey, I understand what you're going through, and yes, I, I see what's happening on the TV screen and what's happening in our communities, but we have the God-given power to rise above it all, and at the end of the tunnel, peeking through the darkness, there is mourning, weeping may endure for a night, but joy a coming joy. in Come on. Yeah. the morning. Mm. morning. You yes. preaching now. And so, wanted to just have something that people can 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 sing and that can be an anthem. We will rise. And you can say to yourself in your personal lives mm. that, you know what, I am not defeated. I am an overcomer. That's right. Mm. And uh, so, that, that was um, the reason behind releasing that you know, and I was so grateful to have Bizzle, who's an amazing uh, hip hop Christian oh, artist. Yeah. If you yeah. if you uh, look him up, he has a huge following. Just an incredible artist, a beautiful wife, beautiful family, and I was grateful that he was able to accompany me on this track. And my brother, who produced uh, the track, did the music. And uh, it's just been such a great experience, and I'm so uh, grateful to God that, you know, it has impacted people in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It has. I know it impacted me. (laughs) I mean, everything about your whole... You know your whole oh, platform. Ahead, ahead. I say everything about your whole platform is is is, is uh. Is, I'm not gonna say state of the art, but first class from your from your flyers, your photographs, the the now the music, the artists, the producers you're working with. I mean, that's a blessing right there to have that type of um, you know, um, resources available to you. Now, my question: Why it took you so long to come out? You know, from twenty, you said twenty oh four was the last time you released your EP. Was that right? No. 20- 2014. 2014. Okay, so that's four years, about four years. So why so long? Why did it take yeah. you so long to break back out? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be careful. 
I don't want to rush anything because it takes time. Because although the resources were available now, it wasn't necessarily available back then. Um, you know, that's 2014. I was still in the midst of trends. Uh, uh, um, relocating, I'm sorry, relocating to uh, Dallas. And um, in relocating, that's where I developed new relationships. So, mm-hmm. you know, God has a way of, you know, basically uh, setting things up in our path. We may think that we are behind or delayed or, uh, you know, it's taking forever, but God doesn't operate in time like we do. And mm-hmm. so he knew that there had to be some type of transition um, that needed to take place and so many things that needed to go on uh, for me to get to where I am now. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right, before Kimmy asks the next question, we, we got people coming into the queue and we got people listening to us on Spreaker Radio overseas. So we're going to give them a chance to hear this this song we keep bragging about. And this one's called Rise featuring Bizzle. Bizzle, Christian rapper. And this is about Sharon Ann. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> Watch the news lately And I can see the hearts breaking The world's gone crazy Enough is enough Mothers and fathers Losing sons and daughters Senseless tragedies But I believe We will rise, we will rise up Take a stand, never give up Never break, never lose hope yeah. See, I believe Better days are ahead of us So wipe the tears, put your head up Just at the end of the tunnel We can do the darkness I can see the morning We will, we will, we will Where's the love? Social injustice. struggle is real, but so is God. He can either calm this storm or he can be Noah's Ark. And in him we can survive the flood that's on us all. He said temptation to come, just be ready for it. Doubt screams, what if? Faith says I already know it. But what good is a mustard seed if you never sow it? Rise up, we finna move this mountain from that ocean.
This is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked. That's right. You tell them. All right, everybody, you listen to Jerry Rose Live Worldwide. That's right. You can catch us also on Music Vision Television, on Facebook Live, and YouTube Live 24-7. You guys, you have an awesome video, and you want the world to see it. Check us out, y'all, because we not only run those videos on our own pro, um, platform, but we also run on cable, digital television, as well as internet television. I'm talking about Apple, the big Apple, Roku, Hulu, Truly. That's right. Just a few. All right. So check us out. We got five shows running in the South and the Midwest on GMAP1.com. That's right up in Illinois. We run in Lake County and on the West Side, West Coast. All right, y'all. So check us out and send your videos to us. Jerry Royce Live at gmail.com or hit up you first uh, management enterprise with uh, Dr. Trinnell. All right. All right, we're talking to Sharon and we rock and rise. I love that music. I hope you don't mind me comparing you, but I, I, you know, your sound is so lifting. And, you know, one of my favorite songs out there, and Colton sent that to me too, and that was by Claretta, uh, Dietrich's sister, Claretta um, Hatton Jackson. She got this song, Help, another one of my favorites. You know, it's very uplifting. And um, we need that wow. kind of music. I mean, we really do. I mean, it's okay, you know, sometimes to go deep, you know, shed some tears and everything, you know, you're feeling, you're feeling the father. But sometimes you want a little bit uplifting, you know. You need that, that ride-along song, you know, to get you to work. Right. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. Right. Kimmy, you ready? Thank you. You off of mute? Yes, I am. All I right. am. Love I love song. that song, Rise, and... Uh, I would like to know the synopsis behind it. It sounds like you're you are like writing a song from, based on the testimonies. And uh, what was that song about? And you said the song "Rise." Uh huh. The, the well, the basically the song came from the aspect of what we saw, um, like I explained on um, previously, the state of the world. Uh, if you see, if you see the video. Uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to check out the video. You see that there's protests going on. You see there's actual clips from news media that's being shown in there. Um, and so basically it stems from me uh, watching the news. I was watching the news with my parents, and I was seeing a lot of things that were going uh, on. And I basically uh, saw um, this kid, and he was crying out, you know, for his father because his father had been killed. Mm. And so it was just so much happening. The anchor man just kept reporting on tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I felt Compelled. this, uh, overwhelming feeling of sadness come over me because I, uh, wanted to help, but I just didn't know mm -hmm. how I could. Mm -hmm. And basically I went uh, to my room, I sat down on the bed and I just, uh, was meditating and I just started writing the lyrics, watched the news lately. I could see the hearts breaking, the world's going crazy. Enough is enough. Mothers and fathers losing sons and daughters, senseless mm. tragedies. But I believe we will rise up, take a stand, never give up, never break, never lose hope. I believe better days are ahead of us. So wipe your tears, hold your head up. Cause at the end of the tunnel, peeking through the darkness, I can see the morning we will rise. And so once you hear that, you, the, the song basically explains itself Mm -hmm. And um, also, of course, there are some things in, in there um, that come with personal experience mm -hmm. um, because I felt uh, if you see some of the uh, um, the um, um, gosh, what do you call them? The protests or some of the aborts that they're holding up. They were saying, mm -hmm. keep hope alive. They were saying your life, you know, it matters and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And there was a point in my life where. I was depressed. Pull up closer. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm actually <laughs> getting ready to head into a rehearsal. So, and I'm just um, at the venue right now. Um, but actually, uh, there was a point in my life where I was depressed. Um, I have a song out, and it, you guys check it out. It's called You Caught Me. It's a personal testimony of mine oh. where... I basically um, was suicidal. I had dealt with uh, verbal and physical abuse growing up. 
uh, as a child. Um, um, and um, this video, I have a visual for that as well. And it caused me to be, uh, you know, depressed and, and, and have low self-esteem and no confidence in myself. Mm. And um, I felt like I was spiraling out of control. And right mm. before, yeah. you know, I felt like I would lose control and hit, you know, the ground is, is what we say, God caught me. Mm. And so that's why I, I entitled it, You Caught Me. Yeah, and, so, yeah. and, and so, yeah, I felt depressed before, you know, and, 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 and um, you know, uh, it was really, you know, my, my mom and, you know, my um, stepdad, but I call him my dad, who really helped get me through that. I mean, it is a long story, um, but if you yeah. go and check out that song, You Caught Me, there is a visual and you will see what I'm saying. <laughs> and I you'll understand the testimonial. And you probably hear what I'm saying right now. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of speaking um, yes, around yes. it, but yes, you'll I understand you it if you see the visual. Yes, yeah, you get yes back I feel it because of the um, verbal abuse is very silent, and we, we don't really mm-hmm. know what it looks like until you actually experience it. And since we're talking about this is, you know, Domestic violence um, month, and thank you for wow. seeing that. Yeah, you know, yeah, because verbal abuse is silent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yeah, is. it is. Thank you, Sharon. Yep, for s- yeah. uh, sharing that part. Um, I, 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 had, I had, you know, and I'm glad you brought that piece up because one of the things that's causing a lot of our youth to run away. They're running away from mm-hmm. that. I mean, we're, Maryland, some numbers came out in the program we were doing. We were shooting yesterday, and uh, the host mentioned something about Maryland has a high number of um, of uh, runaways and orphans, and, and they're finding that these kids mm-hmm. are being being captured and, and sold into sex trafficking. And so mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. and a lot of those kids are people, are kids that nobody know what happened to them. They just disappear from their homes, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's for those reasons. Right. You know, why they leave. So right. uh, we're going to have yes. to get that song. And that, also your video is supposed to be world premiere on Thursday at 10 o'clock. I know you got to get ready to go. Yes. But world premiere here on Positive Power. And, of course, we're going to run it on our other shows that we, I was just telling you guys, that we air in the South on uh, some of the big Christian networks so people get a chance to catch that awesome. um, in their homes. All right. Awesome. awesome. I am awesome. I am elated. I am elated. Thank you guys so, so very much. You're welcome, and uh, Kimmy, I can't yes. believe she she left the Green Bay Packers to hang out with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I am not a. I'm a uh, Kansas City uh, They're gonna star. kill me down here, but <laughs> I am not a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> me either. I'm still no. loyal. Uh, I'm still loyal to <laughs> to the cheese heads, to the green and gold. I, hear you. I am, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't play against each other, so we're okay now. This yeah, is- yeah, yeah. We we don't get to play each other this season. Um, but yeah, but we cool now. We cool now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you gotta, you, you both gotta make it to the playoffs yeah. for that to happen. That's why you gotta make it to the playoffs. Yeah, gotta make it to yeah. the playoffs. <laughs> Well, well, we made it to the playoffs last year. We just didn't yeah. get to the second round. It was like one and done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was no fun. All right. <laughs> well, Sharon, you have anything you want to say before you go? I know you got to run into the venue, and we appreciate you hanging out with Positive Power, yes. Double XI Christian. Yeah. Don't forget about no us. No problem. You got to come hang out with us on our late night show with uh, the Christian, the ladies of uh, Christian Radio. Uh, late night. That's right. Comes on at midnight. Yeah. Come hang out with awesome. us. Awesome. Starting at 11. Awesome. Starting at 11, and then you can hang out with us until 1.30. So we can make that happen, okay? And they have a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have topics and, <laughs> and all that good stuff. It's, you get a chance to preach, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so she got the word in her. I felt that already. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You, you get to do some she preaching. She got the word yeah. in her. Yeah, you, get to, you get to preach on that show. Well, go ahead and it's give us your deep. final words, and and um, we'd be looking forward to hearing from you again, okay? Yes. Um, well, I'd like to say that to anybody who's tuned in um, tonight, who's heard uh, what we've been discussing, I just want to reiterate to be encouraged. Um, if you are in a tough phase uh, in your life right now or seem to be going through some things, I just want you to know that there is hope for you. Um, 
not to give up, not to throw in the towel. And, and you may feel like quitting or you may feel like that there's no hope and, and, and that no one understands. And, and, but there is a God who loves you and there are people who love you and that there is hope for you despite what you've gone through or experienced. You can make it and you will rise. The power of life and death is in your tongue. So speak life over yourself and over your circumstance. And I'm telling you that there will be a strength that will come to you that can only be uh, given by the Father uh, above. I want to encourage you um, with that. Um, and also, uh, for some of you who are listening, who want to find out how, how can I follow you? How can I get your music? You can definitely, uh, check it out. It's on iTunes. It's on Google play. Uh, for my EPs, just sharing in self entitled. You can get rise, just rise sharing in featuring Bizzle. Um, you can definitely follow me on Instagram, uh, under Ms. Sharon Ann, and Facebook, Ms. Sharon Ann, and also Twitter, Ms. Sharon Ann. And uh, the website is SharonAnnMusic.com. So I'm looking uh, to connect with you all, and I thank you for having me on the show tonight. You're very welcome, and thank you for hanging out with us. And don't forget about the Christian Party Line on Friday night, starting at 11 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen, with Paula G. That's right. And Shay Samuels, Lynn, uh, Chanel, Lynn Malloy, and Patrice Jackson. We have a fun topic, scripture, and preaching. So come on out and hang out, and hopefully we have Sharon Ann real, real soon. Thank you so much, and thank you, Colton, for mm-hmm. uh, having your client out here to hang out with us. And good luck with you, and God bless you. No project. problem. All right. Can't wait for Thursday yep. to the world, uh-huh. the world premiere. Yep. All right. Right, yes, man. we'll see. We'll and, see you then. God and, bless. God bless. Yeah. All right. All right. That was Sharon in, ladies and gentlemen. We we'll, we'll hear from, more from her again. She has a very powerful story, and we definitely gotta have her back. So I know Pastor Pastor Kelly like to have her on on his show also. So uh, work her around the positive power family. You guys remember Nikki Burry? Nikki Burry is blowing up. She's just climbing the charts on the billboards top 100 singles i think she's at, sitting at number three right now if i'm not mistaken and we see a lot of the, the homies uh that we have on the show uh robin hawkins he's on there I see quite a few but i think reggie campbell may be on there too so they are definitely doing their thing doing their thing so remember you you, you guys need some some publicity some promos some exposure hit us up inboxes we got radio we got tv we got film if you're a young man and and you decide you want to you know, tell your story. We have a we have a documentary series called Who I Am. We're gonna be releasing that um, over the holidays. Um, I think I have like five of these series already ready to go. So if you're looking for something to look at, we're gonna be running on Music Vision Television. I'm actually trying to work something out with another cable a cable provider in Maryland to run to run that series for me. So um, hopefully we can get that to happen. Big project's about to happen real soon. We're about to be signed real soon to do a documentary on the veterans, on the black veterans. That's right. A lot of you guys have forgotten about a lot of them, unless they're in your family. Uh, a lot of those guys are, are doing so much in their community right now. Um, despite injuries and, and um, illnesses, they're still being a uh, factor in their community. You know, being a pillar. So that's what we got to do, y'all, to lift up. You know, you know, Kimmy, you know, uh, I was listening to Sharon. She's talking about the news. You know, you watch the news sometimes. You're like, oh, man, what the state of the world. You know what? I'm, I'm, I, I, I listen to a lot of YouTube. And, you know, according to the numbers, people of color is doing very well in this country. <laughs> I'm talking about the African-Americans, yeah. the Spanish. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the Hispanics doing very well in this country. And right now, yeah. it seems like the other persuasion is trying to start some stuff because, you know, I don't know. It must be a takeover going on. I don't know. But, you know, I look around. Well, it's been prophesied in the word that, yeah. you know, it's going to get a lot worse. Yeah, I think I they panicking right now because I was looking at a. Yeah. I, was, I, sent, I sent it to uh, Paula G today. I saw his YouTube uh, piece today about, uh, you know, some of the. <laughs> I ain't going to mention that. that that party, the other party, and they were oh, showing some yeah, of the people yeah. that was uh, real big supporters of number forty-five. 
And man, they must, he must have spoke mm-hmm. to the worst of them. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to, you watch the news and it's like a fire or something or a shoot and they go to like yeah. the, the worst person in the crowd that like no teeth and, <laughs> you know, hand not done. Yep. Well, this guy, I guess he didn't have that much to choose from when he was at one of those rallies. And man, wow. they didn't even know their history. <laughs> and they didn't care. How bad number 45 But those are the ones that voted for him. I know. But it was like, it was just so funny. Exactly. You know, right. And I think it's because, one, they can feel. He is the same way. The swing, right. Yeah. The swinging of the power. I mean, because if you look at it, the black middle class is doing so well right now. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you just look at it. I mean, we getting, we got, so we got our degrees. I mean. I've never, I mean, especially where I am, I've never met so many African Americans that had like two, three degrees. I mean, even though they're at, you know, at mid level positions, you know, and some of them are moving into management and they have their masters, their bachelors. Some of them even have two bachelor's degrees, even, and even the Hispanics, you know, a lot of them, they come in, they, mm-hmm. they come in here from like Puerto Rico and them places with their degrees. And then, you know, I look around with, yeah. at the other, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't never trying to push nobody down, but I'm just, just saying how successful people of color ha- ha- have gotten because we knew what we had to do to get what we needed, you know. And and I listen yeah. to some of the, um, the other persuasions. They don't have those pieces of paper, I notice. But yet some of them are still in, in you know, some of the higher positions. You know, even the managers, I think oh, some of them. Privileged. Yeah, right. It's not about who you know when yeah. you're, you know, on the other side of other persuasion. You yeah. Know? It's like, if you right. know somebody, you don't need a degree. Right. Got it. Yeah. But I just I just noticed that the young people are not playing. You know, they're going in. And I remember when some of my um, coworkers, then they really I'm pretty close with a lot of them. And I remember some of those guys were working on their masters and everything, and uh, they got it, and they just you know they were pushing forward. You know, of course, you know, yes. it's not always what you think it is when you get to the top. Because I was at the top, <laughs> and it was. I mean, I really yeah. actually that was one of my favorite jobs when I was working on the uh, the ninth floor. With the, I was actually working for. Uh, one of President Obama's appointees, and uh, oh, uh-huh. she was so so pleasant, very smart lady too. You're talking about somebody to prepare for stuff like she had a lot of hearings and everything. She would really prepare for that kind of stuff, you know. Like she was a lawyer, you know, about to go into court. Which, you know, of course she was because she was going to be facing Congress, you know, the Senate, the committees. And um, I was really impressed with her. And I mean, I really wish she had stayed. But of course, the way politics is, you know, they don't get nominated. You know, and a lot of his people didn't get nominated, and they, you know, they they out the door when 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 things when the change of the guard happens, which is unfortunate because they were really really good qualified people. You know what I'm saying? They weren't wow. just they just weren't friends. They were qualified people, and, and when they left, they they took a lot of talent went out the door with them, and I could I could see the difference of you know just people's attitudes, you know. And I deal with a lot of contractors too, you know, because people, you know, corporate, cause I do corporate, um, filming and, um, even they say the same mm-hmm. thing too, you know, it's like, it's, it's like it's different right now. It's like, it's like we're waiting for something to go off, you know, happen, right? Yeah. You know, it's It'll like, be at any moment. Yeah. I feel you on that. It's one. like spooky. I'm, I'm it's, like, what's it's real, going spooky on? Time. Yeah, it's spooky times. And even, um, you know, the, I think the international leaders feel the same way that we feel. It's like, wow, it's like, you know, you feel like it's like a madman is running things, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Number 45 has so much power. That's why I'm praying for him. <laughs> he can really do some damage. Yeah. I mean, just, he doesn't abide by the rules. He doesn't yeah. abide by the uh, the way of doing things, the procedures. He just do yeah, things, just do. you know, he does things. And the thing about it is when you work with people that, that frustrate you, like leadership, of course you're going to go. You know, it's like, look, I'm rich. Yeah. What am, what am I going to deal with this foolishness for? But for the benefit of the country, right. we still telling y'all to hang in there. <laughs> hang in there. Exactly. We got to keep praying for him, yeah. right? So he doesn't there. make very bad decisions. Yeah, because I've never really been really... In, in politics Um not that much, you know, because it seemed like the country was always right. doing. Of course, you're going to have your your recessions and and depressions. That's just part of the way the cycle works. But um, you know, now it's like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not just about your local government anymore. No. <laughs> you know, they used to be a concern. One time, that used to be the biggest concern was like who was going to be your mayor. 
you know, the governor thing was kind of like took care of itself. But, you know, you want to make yeah. sure you had a decent mayor running things because, you know, they get easy. Right now, look yeah. at the president. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, criminals can sneak into politics right under your nose, man. So anyway, um, even politicians who can pay their way. I, yep, I feel you. Yep. Yeah. All right. We got our next guest on the line. His name is Henry Harris and uh, he's from the DMV. He's here to talk about his, his event that's coming up. And I did post it on my okay. Facebook page too. And I'm, before I bring him on, let me just look at it, pull it up real quick. Yes. This is the M E eight eighth annual. Oh, this is an award show. Is this right? Wow. Oh, concert. Yeah, it's an annual concert. Okay, let's talk to him because um, I never heard of this event. I live right here in Maryland. Mr. Harris, wow. what's going on, sir? Welcome to Positive Power. That works out. I'm hey, Jerry Woods Live. Hey, good evening to you. Uh, thanks for having me. You're welcome, sir. And I got How you doing Tim tonight? Doing awesome. How's everybody? Everybody is fine. You know, you, you always do well when your team went on Sundays. That's a That's just the way it is. <laughs> okay all right that's a, that's all good yeah it's all yeah. good we take that one yes right I, um well, I'm here. you mentioned you mentioned the event but yeah i think you you got it slightly off but so, uh, you know, I, I can fix it up for yeah, you yeah yeah because I, I think when i was talking to mm-hmm. um the the promoter awesome. Yeah, I thought um, he had mentioned this was like a concert, but it looked like you, you mentioned it on the con- the flyers mentioned it's the eighth annual awards. So is, is it both? So tell us a little bit about it and introduce yourself. Okay, first of all, let me once again let me say good evening to everyone that's on the call. My name is Henry Harris. I am a uh, music business consultant. I am the owner and operator of a nonprofit organization called the Strategic Music Partnership. Awesome. And in reference to um, the EMA, prior to it becoming the EMA, which is the Excellence in Music Academy program, we were um, the Excellence in Christian Music Academy mm-hmm. program for the past seven years. This is the eighth year. And it's, it's an award show, but it's not in the same context that you may think that everybody register and put in and mm-hmm. they want to be in this category and that category and so forth and they're going to get an award. That's not what it is. Okay. Um, it, is a, it, it is an award concert where we recognize the, the music industry participants who are graduates of our program, oh, okay. which uh, started back in they, uh, this last session in what we call EMA 18, started, uh, I want to say it was right around the 1st of February, 1st and 2nd of February, and we went all the way through to the first couple of weeks in April. Okay. And what we did was <clears throat> we, we cover all of the different aspects of building a music business, basic foundation so that you can survive in the music industry. So what, what happens is uh, they start off with me, I do three, four, sometimes five sessions, and then we turn them over to the other coaches in the program that come in and teach. You know, we do online training, so they come in and teach uh, marketing, how to command the stage, management, um, songwriting, and other aspects of the music industry. So we've been doing this every year. The, this is our eighth year, and that's what it's all about. So what we do is we have this concert, and some of the participants in the program will come in and perform, and some of the participants outside of the program will perform as well. And then we bring in all the senior citizens. We get sponsors to help us sponsor the event. So all the senior citizens in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, Virginia, Maryland district, can come at no cost. Wow. Okay, so we call it we call it the Senior Citizens Concert Night Out. Mm-hmm. So they dress up and they get to come out to a nice Christian gospel music concert at no cost. Wow. And of course, everybody else would have to get a ticket. That's what it. That's what it's all about. So at this event, we give away the awards, the certificates of completion, the lapel pen. And I know the first year, I think we did medallions and so forth. So, mm-hmm. 
sort of like a token of um, our appreciation for those participants in completing the program. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. So, so you so you call it an academy, the Excellence in Music Academy. I call it an academy because yeah, it's it's training, and the and the mission of the academy is to educate, motivate. And recognize, right. and that's how we do it in that order. Hmm. You know, we give them the uh, information so that they can learn about the music business, and then we motivate them to go out. Like even before this event coming up uh, this week, we motivate them to go out and we do like smaller concerts, like in the senior citizens residential facilities and other places. Hmm. And we motivate them to go out and participate in their community and do all kinds of things leading up to this event. Mm -hmm. And so the recognition is a portion that happens this weekend. Mm, awesome. All right, we're joined by Kimmy Kim from Relations Radio Magazine out of St. Louis. Kimmy Kim, you got a Hi. question for um, Mr. Yeah. Harris? Wow, I like the fact that you are honoring those who... Um, went through your program, what are some of the memories that you have there uh, when it comes to honoring, like, the student? What is a, what, can you remember, like, one of the, one of your students that really had a, a wonderful story that you remember? Because I love what you're doing. It sounds like that you're honoring those who are going through your program and they have a gift in music. What is it like um, knowing that you're making a difference in, in young people? And do you have, like, a testimony from one of your previous? Um, well, yes. Yeah. And what, 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 what encourages me the most and what I really like is seeing the people or the artists that come through the program do well. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're, they're, watch their achievements. And some of them go a little bit off script, we may say. In other words, you know, some of them may go through our program and then go and chase every other award program that's out there <laughs> uh, mm. before, yeah. they, before they, you know, instead of utilizing the tools that we've given them to be able to successfully go and achieve the bigger awards like Courses Telegossal Music Awards or the level ACP image awards or the double awards and stuff like that. Right. Instead of reaching for those achievements, now there have been some in our program that that have been nominated and they have done well on radio. And when I see I see participants in our program that can get as high as forty two or forty three on the radio on the terrestrial radio charts, mm -hmm. you're doing well because you're being a, you're able to use the information that we give you and apply it. So that all of that makes me feel good. So when I look at, so the, I guess the bottom line is when I look at the alumni as a whole and I see the majority of them doing well, that makes me feel good but because it makes me feel that I have a, achieved the primary objective and that is to impart enough knowledge into them to be able to be successful and building this basic foundation. That's right. Mm. That's right. We applaud awesome. you for that. So I was going to ask you what, you know, what compelled you to want to put a program in place like this? You know, I mean, I understand why, but what, you know, what motivated you to, uh, to do this? Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that gets into you. You probably, only, you probably only have enough time blocked off for the whole story, <laughs> but, um, I'll give it to you real short and sweet. Uh, right. Back in in the early 2000, I think in, yeah, to the year 2000, I started getting I started getting involved with the Stella Gospel Music Award, mm -hmm. and because I had a small business in Maryland, and I said, hey, I like gospel music, and I like helping it up and coming artists. You know, why can't I participate? So I became a sponsor. And then eventually I got on the advisory board with the, and when I got on the advisory board, the first committee they put me on was membership. Mm -hmm. And with member, when you're on the membership committee, you're only, you're there for one purpose, and that is to grow the membership. And so I was able to successfully do that 
along with another brother that's out of Baltimore, uh, Fred Newsom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, know I think Fred. you know him. Yeah, we know Fred. Um, yeah, he was he was also a part of my committee. He was on the advisory board as well. So when I saw all of the things that was going on within that major award platform, I, you know, I was determined to help independent artists become become participants. That's why I call them music industry participants. I was determined to help them to participate because, and you mentioned sports at the at beginning of this conversation about your team winning. A team wins when you're on a level playing field. If you're not on a level playing field, I don't think there's any sport out there that doesn't have a level playing field. It may be, except for maybe golf or something, you know, where they put all these obstacles or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we tried to ensure a level playing field, and what we found out was the lack of knowledge. People did not have the knowledge. So eventually I became president of that advisory board. So, because the other president, I think you probably know him as well, stepped down and I took over and I served for seven or eight years as president of the Stella Gospel Music Academy Advisory Board in a role that I really didn't know too much about, but I learned. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was the industry taking advantage of people that didn't know any better. So when they decided to no longer have the advisory board, which was about five or six years ago, I knew that I had to try to develop a program to fill in that gap, to keep the, mo- to keep the momentum going. Because this industry is like swimming with the sharks. Mm-hmm. And I know they say that about a lot of business, and that's mm-hmm. what they told me when I first opened up a small business. You're going to be in business, you got to learn to swim with the sharks. And I really didn't understand what that meant mm-hmm. until, until I got deep into the business. So that's how I started this program. And I started it back in 2011. And we've been going every since. It's not big. It's not big scale. It's not as big as some of these other award programs. And there's no, there's no hype and there's no pipe dream. It's just information because information is power. Yes, yes. Shared information is strategic power. When we share the information correctly, we identify the resources that create opportunities. And that's what this is all about, creating opportunities for those who need it. That's right. Those who love the music, the arts. All right. Thank you right. so much. All right. Kim, you got quite another question for Mr. Harris? Yes, I do. What kind of legacy would you like to leave for your um, your ministry and for your uh, program? Well, the legacy I would like for somebody to be able to, you know, those who have worked with me, and of course we call them, this is how, this is how I set up. The people who helped me to teach the various classes. We call them coaches. And we call the participants, we call them candidates. Okay, so the the legacy that I would like to leave is for somebody else either within this program to pick it up, take it over, keep it going for years and years to come because there's always going to be a need for music business education. And I don't think a lot of focus is not on the music business education portion. I think too many times, and I think I heard, you know, talking a little bit before I came on, he's talking about award programs. There's too many people who are award seekers. And I've seen a lot of people who've gotten to the point of receiving major awards and they, 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 they didn't win and it was the biggest letdown Mm. for them. They end up doing something else. Mm. And I don't want to see that. I want to leave a legacy of seeing people or artists or participants, when they do something, to continue to do it and leave that legacy, like the Four Tops or the Mm. Temptations. When you hear their music, 
or Aretha Franklin. When you hear that music, those are that's legacy. That's right. Because you can tell what the songs are in the first three bars. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's when you know you got a legacy because you impact you impact a lot of people and people respect you. Yeah. And when people can respect your music being played across any medium, that's why I don't even like to hear gospel or Christian artists say, I don't want to be played on secular radio. Where it's all secular because <laughs> the majority of the radio stations are owned by non-Christian people. Mm-hmm. So, if you don't want your music played on a secular station, you don't want radio, mm. be it internet, terrestrial, or whatever. Exactly. You don't want it. Mm-hmm. Satellite. That's been taking over. Satellite. Or big. satellite. Same mm-hmm. thing. XM. Yeah. Yep. Everything. Everything is squeezing together. Pretty soon, it's all going to be. It's going to be one. It's, it's all being squeezed together. Pretty soon, it's going to be like Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because right. Amazon. Amazon will tell you what their mission statement is. We want to be all things to all people. That's right. That's the bottom line. Yep. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's why they're getting in so much stuff. Yep. And that's the way artists in this music business have to think and stay focused. Mm -hmm. And that's the legacy I want to see. I want to see them be able to build their own legacy and leave it and make this industry better. Yeah. Now I got a question for you, Mr. Harris, about what you just um, uh, started talking about the, the award seeker. Why do you think um, some artists are so addicted to the award show? Is it, is it because it's a, it's a bigger stage than what they used to getting? You know, I mean, what's your opinion on that? So I think part of the issue is they're being denied they're being denied access to the to the bigger awards, so all of these little sort of like these, um, you know, what I can't. I, I, I want to call it another. I want to call it something else. Sort of like you know how you have a sports team, and then you got to have the smaller teams feeding into the major teams. Yeah, the minor leagues. Sort of like that. Yeah, yeah minor leagues and farm teams and stuff like that. Mm. Artists want to belong, and they want recognition. But it's painful. It's really painful to see an artist go to an award program. That's why I try to uh, try to clean this up when I was telling you at the beginning mm-hmm. that we're different. Because you will never see us honor an, an artist for Artist of the Year. Mm-hmm. Because if you, if you are an artist... You don't have major radio. You're not on television. (laughs) You're not doing anything in the community. Your social media numbers are real low. And you can't even bring in a handful of people to an event. You can't be considered an artist of the year. Too many times you get up-and-coming artists who will get on social media. Yes, it is good to give thanks and recognition to God for all your accomplishments and so forth. Mm -hmm. But to be artist of the year comes with, comes with a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of artists run to whatever platform that will have them. And it, and there were, you know, I work with, I work with a couple of artists myself as a consultant and I've had them call me and say, Hey, Mr. Harris, I just got nominated for this award and that award. And they're going to call you and speak to you and tell you what we need to do. And then they'll call me and I'll say, well, Hey, you know, my client said they are up for an award, but you got them in a category. My client just came out with his record six months ago, (laughs) right? Mm-hmm. Or 12 months ago, and you got him in a category with an artist that had a record out for the past three to four years. How can an artist with less than six months or seven months compete with an artist that had a, a record out for the past three or four years? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. And then you say, 
And that artist may be successful in winning depending on the number of people and relatives they get to vote. Mm -hmm. And they would be considered artists of the year, but the record is three years old. The industry does not allow you to even chart on the current charts when your music goes close to 18 months. Mm. You become a recurrent. Right. So how can you be artist of the year when your music is two to three years old? But see, the artist is so excited yeah. that they're being recognized for artist of the year regardless of where it's coming from, they take it. Mm. You're teaching now. Mm. And that's why even when I was with the Stellar Award, and I don't put the Stellar Awards on a, on a, on a pedestal because they got, to, they got to clean up some of the stuff that they do as well mm. because they got, to become, they got to be fair. Right. And their eligibility rules, okay? But you cannot become, with these major award platforms, they have like the first nine or ten categories of what they call TV categories. So when you get an up-and-coming artist, the first thing they do is go in and put in for all 26 categories. <laughs> and then they get mad and rejected because the rules say you must have charted in the top 25 on at least three of Nielsen charts. One is sales and the other two are radio. Mm. So if you're not on either one of those charts, you don't qualify. But there is, there is some daylight there because if you, if you like quartet, if you are quartet music or hip-hop gospel or whatever, they give you some leeway because why? Uh, hip-hop gospel artists, and this is not a hit on them, this is just a fact, hip-hop gospel artists will not make it to the top 25 on radio. Hmm. Children's music will not get to the top 25 on radio. Hmm. Unless it's somebody like the Walls Group or something like that. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Backed by Kirk Franklin or somebody like that. Right. So there's some leeway, but you got to be strategic when you go in and make those selections. So that's, that's why I believe artists get misled. They go to whoever will have them, and they're stocked their shelves with all these awards, but they will never join Naris in seeking a Grammy. Mm. Okay? They will never join Naris. They will never join the Stellars or they'll never join the Dove Awards because they think it's, they think it's out of reach. Mm -hmm. So they go for the quick fix. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And we've been meeting, um, we actually know a few artists that, that's been on our shows that, that's been part of the Grammys. So it's not that far reach, you know. So they are it's some not. encouragement you there. Yeah. yeah. It's not. You just got to, number one, you got to join Naris. Which means, number one, you got to become a member of the organization. Okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, you got to get to know the people in your chapters. You know, Washington chapter, Philadelphia chapter, wherever. Wherever the chapter meetings are. Same thing with the NAACP Image Award. Mm -hmm. Okay? You just got to get to know the people so that those people... And that's just like the Academy Awards. You know, they're voted on by the Academy members. So they, these members have to be, they have to know you. It's mm. a lot to it. And they have to. A lot of work. Yeah, it's it, yeah you, you got it. But here again, the quick fix sometimes is better. So our program, getting back to our program, because I know I'm going way out left field, but getting back to our program, which is, takes place, uh, our concert takes place on Saturday, October the 6th at the Ark Theater in Washington, D.C., 1901 Mississippi Avenue, Southeast. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be there from 6 to 8.30. Tickets are available for anybody that would like to come, those in media. If you like to come, anybody in media are more than welcome to, to come at no cost because I know how it is being in media myself. We go out and support a lot of times we may not, we want to support, we may support. Sometimes we just get media access. So I clearly understand that. Amen. 
Amen. So do you have a number somebody can reach out to you or email if they want to bring yes. the church out? Yes. Yes. Uh, my uh, telephone number, telephone, my office number is area code 301-567-5349. That's 301-567-5349. So you can call me. If they have any questions about our program, any questions about the event coming up, or if there's any churches that are listening or any pastors or anybody that attends the church that has senior citizens in the church and they want to bring them and we can't get the tickets to them, all they got to do is let us know, give us the names or give us the name of the group and they'll get access. They will get access. All right. See, it's not about... It's not about what we make or profit out of this event. It's just about having a successful event. So the artists that we have on this event, they don't pay any showcasing fee. They don't have to purchase tickets. They want to support the sponsor senior. And they're more than happy. They're more than happy to allow them to do that. But this is about them. So there's no showcase fee, and that's what makes a difference. See, a lot of people would look for us to turn this into a um, regular award program showcase and fee and just make some money out of it and be done with it. Mm -hmm. But that's not where we are. That's not where we are. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you this, and I know you probably your guests want to ask some other questions, but I will say this to you. For years, I was an I didn't even know it. Say that part again, Mr. Harris. I'll let that. You, you drop back. You I'll, drop. Let that just, uh, I'll let that sit. I'll let that sit. I'll let that sit right there with you. I'm so sorry. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was listening to your comment. You asked me what question was that. I'm so sorry about that. No worry about it. No, I was saying, no, that, that last part, what I just said was the reason I said, I, I said for many years, because I was saying, you know, we don't do any showcase and fee and all this other yeah. stuff. I said, for many years, I know how it is because for years I was an artist and I didn't know it. Ah, uh, okay. That's okay. what you said. Okay. Because you dropped a little bit when you said that. All right. Yeah. Your artist did not know that. Hmm. And I didn't know it because, it, and, and my point being is this, I didn't know the music business. I didn't know any of this. I started playing drums in church. Okay. I played behind quartet groups growing up while I was in high school. When I went into service, I played drums in a band. And then I did the keyboard thing with the one-man band. You know how they used to have a keyboard player that had a rhythm, rhythm machine you go around and just play in the night spots, mm -hmm. like on the military bases, just have a rhythm machine behind you. So I've done that. I've done that. And that's why I say I can relate because for years I was an artist and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's what a lot of the people that we support and work with, when they come to us, I believe that's how they come to us. They are artists, creators, and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so true. Oh, man, Mr. Henry, we're gonna have to, we definitely going to have to have you come back here to... To have a have a radio show. Yeah, basically. I took up all your time. <laughs> well, actually, you, you didn't have enough time. I mean, well, you know, the show does run to ten thirty, but you didn't have enough time to really get into a lot of the the, the the topics that artists need to to be addressed with. You know, some of these, you know, development. That's what you're talking about, artist oh, development. Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. like really big artist development. Yeah, we you know we we can come back and we could talk about some other stuff. We could talk about some issues that artists run into when they need mm -hmm. to have stuff fixed. Like yeah. how come their music is not charting? How come they're not getting credit for their sales? How come is some people ending up on Billboard and they don't? Mm -hmm. How come um, we follow? I think we follow each other on social media, right? No, I couldn't find you. Um, how you how you have your name on on social media? Because I was trying to find uh, you. Henry Harris. It's just Henry Harris. Um, Carlton tagged me. Carlton tagged me. Um, I think with the broadcast. 
Don't you broadcast it live? Yeah, sent the video. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, I see you right here. Yeah, right um, strategic music partnership. And we're not friends. Let me yeah, strategic or yeah, but I'm not, I'm just listening as Henry Harris. It's um, I'll um. Okay. It's Jerry, right? Yeah. Jerry I, Ross. Yeah, I just sent you a request. Oh, okay. But anyway, my point being is that you know. A lot of times we do a lot of troubleshooting, you know, when people were artists like recently, we had all of these quartet folks mm -hmm. who were charting on Billboard. They had never charted before. Dr. Chi has been playing music for 29 plus years. He said, Brother Harris, we've never been on the charts until you, you came along and helped us out because prior to that, people, all people were doing just taking in money. That's true, that's true. Mm, that's You're in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah I'm outside. You're in Baltimore. Yeah, I'm 20 minutes outside Baltimore. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we definitely will have to talk to you, man. Matter of fact, I'm, I want to put you on my schedule this week to talk to you. So um, I'm going to be reaching out to you this week. Um, ho Hopefully tomorrow before you get real busy with the event. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, just let me know. Yeah, I inbox um, you first. You check your inbox. We got... <laughs> We got some things we got to get got to get together before the weekend. Amen. But just let me know. Amen. All right, so we're gonna take one last question from Kimmy Kim, and and then we're gonna um, close out the show. Amen. I just love your passion for what you're doing because you're not doing it for for um for money, and you're right. You do see like the war short shows and the um. um celebration that you tend to see they tend to be geared towards money how can you know people who want to be recognized for their gift um be really recognized without having to come out with a lot of money because i do see you know really talented people but because of the people want to be well recognized they get overshadowed because they're paying into the awards so that they can get awarded but you're missing out on the true talent how can they get recognized i think the i think the key to that kim is um is they need to make sure that they build a base their music business basic foundation and which means that when you create music your metadata needs to be right. And they, you know, it's, it's sad when you, when they send out music <laughs> and it becomes track one, track two, track three. And, and not bad. just the up and coming artists. You got a lot of, a lot of professional it. people sending music from record labels mm -hmm. that's not properly tagged and encoded. Yep. Okay. So true. That's, that's the first issue right there. They got to clean up the metadata because there are websites and we go over this in class and we go over and I post this on social media and stuff all the time. You got metadata that needs to be cleaned up, name a song, name of the artist. There's money out there for artists on the AFM, American Federation of Musicians, Unclaimed Royalties Fund. You can Google that. And you could just spend all day just plugging in names. They got an alphabetical list of, their, of, of money that they're holding that belong to people because their metadata is not correct. Mm. So when you build the foundation, get your metadata correct, Utilize some, make sure the quality, the quality of music is correct. Use some of the tools that we give them, like the break-even schedule, like don't go off and order a thousand CDs and know that you're going to have to charge X amount of money or do X amount of things in order to break even. So we give them the break-even schedule. Look at all, just look at that whole basic foundation. Once you put that together, the artist has a point to operate from. It's like, a, it's like, being in the military, mm -hmm. you know, your, your, your home base or your rear base is your foundation. You lose that, yeah. you lose the battle. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's where they have to, that's where they have to start. And that's, and they can get the recognition and, you know, like festivalnet.com, we push that all the time. It's like thousands of festivals all over the country that will pay artists to be on these festivals, but artists prefer to pay to be on showcases. So there's just various tools that they can use to change the tide. So when they say people perish for the lack of knowledge, they leave off the second part, and that is because they refuse the knowledge. 
As long as they continue mm. to refuse the knowledge, as long as they continue to refuse it, they won't get any better. Mm. I like that. Yeah. He he's very it. wise. <laughs> he's an experience. He's, he's, a, he's, he's well, a consultant. Wise. Strategic I've been consultant. listening to you, so that's yeah. why I've been really quiet. So. Yeah. You have well, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's about strategy. That's what, what that's what it's all about. It is. Listening yourself and it is moving in the right direction. Okay. Not not off left. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. And there's a brother out of Baltimore. I can't say I can't think of his name right now, but he wrote a book on strategic partnerships. Mm. And um, and that's what it's about. Being strategic in everything you do. That's because right. those same people that are coming after your business, you could turn the tide on them and go after their business. Mm-hmm. Amen. With a strategy, with the right strategy. That's right. That's right. All right. All right, man. We really appreciate you, Mister Henry. We definitely going to talk, man. Um, but before we go, we want to, we want you to give everybody your final, you know, your final words and the encouraging words and more information about how, about the event. And uh, we're in the show. Amen. All right. Uh, once again, Jerry, and to your team, and I want to thank thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity and the platform to be able to uh, to impart some of this knowledge. Yes, sir. And to let people know that we are having the EMA 18. Now, if you notice, when I was talking earlier, I said it, we initially we were Excellence in Christian Music Academy, and we changed it to Excellence in Music Academy. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a strategic move as well. There was no hit. No hit on the Christian faith, but I have a nonprofit. So when you have a nonprofit, you want to be able to open it up to everybody that's in the music business. Right. Okay, so that's why we changed it to Excellence in Music Academy mm-hmm. in order to help the nonprofit. Now, the event is October the 6th. It's the EMA 18th awards concert at the Art Theater in Washington, D.C., 1901 Mississippi Avenue, Southeast Washington, D.C. My telephone number is 301 567 5349. Once again, if there's any senior citizen out there, whether, whether your team knows them or somebody that's in your listening audience knows them and they want to attend the event, and more than welcome to come, and we, we'll provide a ticket for them. Until we fill up the venue, you know, um, that's a task in itself because a lot of people want to be over at the other event across town, but, hey, we're not competing with them. That's right. We're doing what we do. Amen. We're doing what we do. That's right. That's so right. <laughs> uh, it is what it is, you know what right. I mean? That's right. The show doesn't stop. That's right. It goes on. All right, Mr. Henry, really appreciate you uh, coming on the show. And this was a great, you know, uh, contact. I mean, this is a lot I need to know. I've been talking to Dr. Neesman for a while. Both Paul and I have been, you know, um, you know, picking his mind on the industry. We had him on the show here, and, and uh, we'd love to try to get you over here. We'll, we'll check with your, your schedule so we can get you on the show also. And, oh, um, oh, absolutely. Mr. Newsom is a good guy. He was, uh, like I said, he was on. We were, we served on the board together, and you'd be surprised mm. that make up the other fifteen or sixteen people that made up that board. Mm. And I made a lot of good contacts and a lot of good friends. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's how I learned to do internet radio. Because you know, I had an internet radio as well. Oh, wow. That we, you know, we kind of shut down for a while. Spirit Co. One, mm. you know, we were one of the first. Myself, Andre Carter, and some of the others. But what I like to say and leave this here again, I want everybody in your listening audience, audience to know not just about our event coming up, but just understand that information is power. Amen. Shared information is strategic power. When we share the information freely, we identify resources that create opportunities. And if we don't create opportunities for one another, then uh, I don't know where we're headed. <laughs> but I know I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to operate in the spirit of Nehemiah Amen. because we, we're the wall builders because the gospel music industry, the Christian music industry, all of it's crumbling. 
but it is hope. That's right. And you don't have to build a wall to keep people out. You build a wall to protect the industry that it surrounds. That's right. Amen. Powerful. All right, that's Henry Harris. So check him out, everybody. You can go out to my page and find a flyer. It's happening October 6th, if you can get away. Washington, D.C. is a beautiful city. I know a lot of people probably haven't been in a long time, but you'd be amazed what they did to Washington, D.C. Same with Baltimore. Today we shared a beltway with them. So come on out and check it out, October 6th. All right, Kimmy Kim, any final words, Kimmy Kim? Yes, I just want to thank you once again, Jerry Worth, for this opportunity, and you're just amazing. I love your platform. And my final words would be don't give up on yourself and don't throw in the towel. Continue on pushing until God tells you um, that you have arrived. And one thing I have learned in your trials and your tribulations, that they're there to make you strong. And God will give you the strength and the information and the resources that you need to persevere. So don't give up on yourself until yes, God right. has given you that reward. And you don't get that anyway until you go to heaven. That's right. Live your purpose. <laughs> so that is my final thought. Amen. All right, everybody. You're Tell them, listening robot. to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, everybody. We appreciate everybody that tuned in. We want to thank our guest, Sharon Ann, and Mr. Henry Harris. That's right from Washington, D.C. All right. And we want to thank Colton McConnell for Round the Clock Management and Kimmy Kim from Relations Radio. Amen. John 14, 6, Jesus answer. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 11, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His estimate greatness. Praise Him with trumpet and sound. Praise Him with flute and chop. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. All right, everybody. Don't forget we be back on Mondays. Every Monday. Late Night with Jervis Live and Kimmy Kim. Starting at 9 o'clock right after Pep Talk with Reese at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow night, Tuesday, we got Pastor Time with Dr. Paul Kelly. So tune in for some Bible study. Have a good time. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power Double XI. Check us out at PositivePower21.org. Check out all our shows. We produce the shows for television and for short films. So go on and check it out at PositivePower21.org. Tell us what you think. All right? Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Tell them, robot. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Lately, and I can see the hearts breaking. The world's gone crazy. Enough is enough. Mothers and fathers losing sons and daughters. Senseless tragedies. But I believe we will rise, we will rise up. Take a stand, never give up. We'll never break, never lose hope yeah. See, I believe Better days are ahead of us So wipe your tears, hold your head up Cause at the end of the tunnel yeah. Peeking through the darkness I can see the morning We will, we will, we will
no compassion So tell me, where's the love? Social injustice Secret motives Seems no bless Enough is enough Cause we will rise, we will rise up Take a stand, never give up Never break, never lose hope oh. See, I believe Better days are heaven So wipe your tears on your head up At the end of the tunnel Peek it through the darkness I can see the money, yeah Stuff is revealed, I know it's hard I know the struggle is real, but so is God He can either calm this storm or he can be Noah's Ark And in him we can survive the flood that's on us all He said temptation to come, just be ready for it Doubt screams, what if? Faith says I already know it But what good is a mustard seed if you never sow it? Rise up, we finna move this mountain from that Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.